Good morning, citizens of Guyana and of the region. This morning, as the lead head in CARICOM with responsibility for agriculture and food security, I thought it necessary to in bring an initial update on the impact of Hurricane Daryl on our vision 25 by 2025. As you uh, are aware by now, Hurricane Barrel would have brought devastating impact on the economy's life, livelihood, infrastructure, and life as normal. In all the islands, the hurricane would have passed through. An initial assessment of this impact is ongoing, whilst as a region, I know Prime Minister Mutley leading with other heads who are affected are trying to mobilize our regional, technical, human and financial resources to come up with a comprehensive analysis on the impact. But as lead head on agriculture and food security, I am tremendously concerned at the setback Hurricane Barrel would have on the 25 by 2025 food security plan. The initial assessment is heart-wrenching to our farmers, to the government, and to the people of these countries. It is heart-wrenching because of the tremendous investment, the tremendous policy commitment, and budget support that was placed in the agricultural sector since 2020. The investment in infrastructure, water system, technology, crop variety, farm support, farm to market and infrastructure. Many of these countries would have lost all of this investment. The initial investment the initial assessment on the impact of barrel on the agricultural sector not only shows that, and when I speak about agriculture here, I'm speaking about aquaculture, not only shows that we have lost the years of hard work and investment, but the immediate damage to infrastructure and crops and livelihood from the agricultural and uh, fishery sector is in the tens of millions of dollars. Just a desktop initial review. It is important to note that Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Jamaica, Barbados, these were all islands, countries that were on track, mostly, in achieving the 25 by 2025 target set by themselves. I had asked the chair of the Ministerial Task Force to give me an assessment, and from his assessment, it is said that with its immediate effect, Hurricane Darrell, in some instances, would have damaged or completely wiped out the agricultural sector. So not only is the initial with the investment and costs of damage concerning to me as lead head in agriculture, but it is also the long-term investment costs to rebuild uh, the infrastructure to 
find resources to recapitalize the farmers. As you know, most of the farmers and fisher folk are not insured. To a lot, a lot of the crops damage are long-term crops also. Seven years duration to maturity. To get high yielding variety. To get into cropping in place while uh, reinvestment is placed in those permanent long-term crops. So there's a lot of short, medium, and long-term issues in the agricultural sector in the region that must be addressed and addressed in a comprehensive way. In Barbados, for example, when one may look at Bridgetown and Barbados, the whole you may not realize the extent of damage in Barbados. Not only the beaches that constitute an important resource for the tourism product, much of the beaches are tremendously affected. That would have an impact on a main revenue earner. And when you have a situation where the agricultural sector, and in Barbados' case, the fishery sector, well, agriculture generally, but especially the fishery sector, has been severely damaged and require tremendous investment for infrastructure, retooling, uh, brands, sorting out the initial livelihood of the fisher folk, getting back their assets so that they can go back making their livelihood. But when you have that compounded by the main revenue earner of the country, tourism, being affected, it tells you the magnitude of how, how uh, the situation is amplified. So in Barbados, the fishery sector was tremendously affected. From our initial assessment, one third of Bridgetown Fishing Harbor was destroyed. Over 200 fishing vessels were damaged or destroyed, severely impacting the fishing industry. And of course, the families of our fishing folk there in Barbados have suffered not only tremendous loss of asset, but loss of livelihood. Outside of this, you have hundreds of acres of agricultural commodities that was lost, those that was crops that was lost, and production that was taken out instantaneously from uh, Barbados agricultural sector. Coastal infrastructure and property sustained damage from the storm surge, high winds, and this is also concerning because the coastal infrastructure is also key for agriculture and for the development uh, of the agricultural sector and the support for farmers. In Grenada, as you know, the situation is horrific, especially in Karikou and Petit Martinique. These two islands were completely destroyed. The livestock, permanent crop, cash crop, all the investment in agriculture would have been completely destroyed in these two islands. Whereas in Grenada, there has been tremendous impact on the agricultural sector and production. As I said, the assessment there and in the other islands have continued. But we are very concerned about the immediate and medium term ability of Grenada to quickly get back its productive capacity in agriculture. There are some thoughts uh, and some initial ideas 
that I've, that I've already shared with some colleagues, and also the chair of the Ministerial Task Force for Agriculture, to see how we can quickly mobilize the necessary stakeholders and resources to address this tremendous setback that our 25 by 2025 action plan has been hit with by barrel. I'm also deeply concerned and will be making the necessary calls in relation to FAO, ECA, and other institutions coming in from a very early stage to help our farmers and to work with the region. Because for sure, there are some changes in the methodology and changes in the approach to food production that we'll have to take into consideration in this build back phase. I'm very concerned also that this is only the beginning of this hurricane season. And we've already seen such a major setback. And I'm only speaking, this setback is in the totality of the economies of these countries, but I'm speaking specifically on the area that I have responsibility for, that is agriculture, because I know the tremendous improvements and the tremendous investments and the tremendous goodwill uh, that this sector has received from governments and farmers as a result of the activism and the strong work by the different uh, governments and ministries and farmers, there has been a renewed vigor in increasing the product productivity and agricultural output uh, in all of these uh, uh, islands. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I spoke to Prime Minister Gonzalez. It is heart-wrenching there because St. Vincent was also making tremendous strides in the 25 by 2025 action plan. In St. Vincent proper, an initial assessment shows us we have more than 80% damages and losses to agriculture. Immediate production has been taken out that will affect costs, livelihood, it will affect supply. The supply and demand has a relationship with price, as we know. On the Union Island and Myro, almost 100% of the agriculture in those islands and the permanent uh, crops was completely lost. Now, these islands depend heavily on the permanent crops, whether it's the fruit trees that are important. Uh, but in the case of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the bananas, the plantains, livestock, vegetables. So, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the losses has been enormous. In St. Lucia, we had, while we did not have the type of losses, like Grenada and St. Vincent and St. Lucia, there will also be a tremendous setback in the 25 by 2025 plan here. 35% of the islands, bananas and plantains have been affected, and that is the initial assessment. Uh, more than uh, 100 acres of agricultural commodities, including vegetables, roots and tubers, and has been affected, farmland crops, uh, and current production has been taken out of the system. Now, for those of us uh, in larger land, agricultural land space, we must understand that three and 400 acres of agricultural production in vegetables and 
uh, root crops and so on, plantains, bananas, has a tremendous effect on the economy and livelihood of these countries. Jamaica also suffered extensive damage in the agricultural areas. Uh, this damage is, as I said, just as in the other um, countries where current production has been taken out of the system. And in most of the cases here, it is the rural farmers, the rural farmers and rural communities that have suffered the most. And the investment required to bring back these communities into productive capacity is going to be enormous. So whilst the initial effort is around current needs, we have this immediate, medium, and long-term situation as a result of error on countries that has been affected. I'm also very concerned uh, on the nutritional side of things, because as you know, in the initial, this initial phase of dealing with the consequences of the hurricane, whether it's Cariko or Union Island, completely devastated, the quick fix now is to get more immediate food in, whether it's pastas, uh, um, more grain flora. So we can also have uh, the nutritional food value, nutrition, affected. I'm raising these concerns as Lee Head because sometimes we do not get from mainstream media and from the actors, international actors, this aspect uh, of the equation when these major hurricanes hit us. So I've asked the Chair of the Ministerial Task Force to convene a strategic meeting in a new week to include ICA, Embrapa, the Brazilian government, to look at how we want to rebuild technology available, look at some quick yielding variety that we can can introduce so that we can get some earning back as quickly as possible to the farmers, to look at high yielding variety, to look at varieties that may be able to withstand our, pl our plantation style agriculture that might be able to withstand uh, greater winds in the future, for example, the hybrid mangoes, that will still give you the quality mangoes with high yield and production, but the trees uh, are, are smaller and less susceptible uh, to full-blown impact. Uh, the way in which we have to rebuild is to keep resilience and sustainability, and I think the use of hydroponics and shade house immediately will be critical because this can accelerate uh, how much vegetables and leafy uh, vegetables and crops like that we can put back on the market very quickly, which will give the farmers uh, uh, a shorter uh, time lag in terms of getting back some resources and also will help in addressing immediate food and nutritional, nutritional needs. We also, I'm also asking the minister to look at the, uh, the ministerial task force for them to look at price and price stability, to look at what are critical commodities needed to see how we can negotiate with our neighbors to have those commodities supplied so that we can keep the price. The livestock is concerning to a lot of these islands, especially those two that, uh, that have tremendous reliance on tourism. 
we have to ensure that the market forces does not add, well, does not, it, will al it is already added uh, additional pressure on especially uh, the middle and, and, and low middle income and low income families. But we have to ensure that we mitigate that as far as possible in terms of food inflation and food prices. Globally, the market food prices has been going up rapidly. The transportation costs, the get food in, uh, the shipping costs has increased tremendously. So all of this is, was conspired against the current situation. And as lead head on agriculture and food security, I'm very concerned, but I just wanted to address this issue directly. To share these uh, thoughts and to say that I've asked the Ministerial Task Force to convene a meeting early in the new week to address these issues so we can uh, propose to the Chair of CARICOM and the Heads a plan of, of action moving forward. Uh, thank you, and uh, I wish uh, my brothers and sisters in the region, my colleagues in the region, uh, continued. Uh, faith and patience and success as we rebuild stronger. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your Sunday.